this is the site. We're in San Francisco, close to the sea. This is sort of the context data that I wanted to start with showing you. Here we have site limits, we have buildings, we have vegetation. I also added roads and I used the property boundaries. All of this information is um, ordered through our data services. But let's go into my design. So this is a mixed use project where I'm trying to acknowledge new transportation angle into to this area by the bay. So this is my former project. I want to keep this one. So I copied my uh, proposal and renamed it to my former Revit link proposal. And this one, I'm going to start right away and send it to Revit. And you can see I'm getting a confirmation here that the proposal has been sent to Revit and the file is now sort of available to go into Revit and to bring to Revit. I'm going to start a new file. I will shift and to be in the default 3D view. And I will go under massing and site and fetch my format proposal. I'll select the load proposal. And it's now checking which one. And you can see here that the name of the proposal is matching the one proposed here. And I will load. It normally takes a minute or two, but of course, depending on the complexity of your former project, it could take longer. We will prompt you with a reminder of what data layers you have included in your former project as they now are being brought into another software. And now you can see we have very much the same project, but in Revit. I want to highlight that we have created a model group where we have all of the contextual buildings into uh, generic models. We have brought over uh, the site limit. It is here, slightly red. We have the trees, we have walls, and we also have room objects, making it possible for you to monitor your areas, for example. From the former terrain model, we're creating a topo solid with the same sort of differences in heights to replicate the real world. Now we're going to get into this sort of how does it work when you're working in Revit and how will that be brought into Forma? And for that, I'm going to turn off a few of the things to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So imagine we have these volumes. I'm going to do two changes. First, I'm going to change these uh, walls and I'm going to select them to be an exterior glazing because I know this area has a lot of curtain wall facades. And I'm doing this because I want to show you how the level of detail of when you're bringing your uh, model back into format and how that will look. We now have a facade. The second change I'm going to do to the file before I go back to format is I'm going to do some modifications of these roofs. With that, I'm ready to do my first design update into format. To do that, I'll need to go under massing a site and then I'll uh, select the update proposal. And here's again the possibility uh, that if you don't want to bring all of your information, you could select the view that only includes the elements that you want to update. And now we are asking you if you want to proceed with update. We're telling you how many former mesh elements uh, they are coming from these curtain walls. And now we'll move back and I'll move into that proposal that we now have the connection to Forma. A few buildings we have not done any changes to, so they are sort of still Forma native, as you will be able to see the, the areas with those, while the Revit objects now have converted into mesh objects, meaning we will not be able to, to keep track of the areas for those anymore. What we want to show you now is the compare of how the different designs work, because we actually did some changes here. So let's initiate a sun analysis for this new design. If you haven't tested formal analysis before, they are very easy to use and they normally take a minute or less. I'll move directly to compare where you can put your analysis side by side. So I'm going to bring the Forma Revit link proposal and compare it to the first one. And now you can see I'm able to look at the designs side by side. 
I can assess the design chains and its impact on the ground and compare those into exact uh, measurements. Perhaps this is the most interesting to see where if we're gaining more or less of the areas where we have a lot of sun. But I also wanted to see how the area for this existing building and how the design has sort of influenced that. For that, I'm going to use the inspection tool and put out a few of my selected spots just so I feel I'm, I'm taking uh, this design change with the right information at hand. We could do a lot of this, but it's just to sort of prove that the live link is there. So I will go back to Revit because we know that you will need to do this simultaneously. So I also want to show you the possibility how this would work if you, uh, for example, do another coordination with Forma. So let's bring those existing buildings back. And this time I'm actually going to decide that the client decided that this building that's also part of the uh, property is also going to be part of my project. So I'm going to edit this group and then I'm going to remove this um, building and finish. Now the project has grown. With that, I'm going to move into a floor plan. When we're creating the Revit file, we're not only creating the buildings, we're also creating, of course, the structured information where everything is tied to a level. So you would be set to do that detailed design. Let's just sync that back to format. I'm going to update the proposal. This is an area where I just want to show you how sort of how well the environments are working together. And let's move back and we'll have a fresh form of proposal here. And now you can see the building is added uh, and it's not only added, but we also managed to remove the contextual data that was here. In that sense, we're also keeping track of sort of that information for you. So right now, uh, these are masses. I will get one room object per floor and it will have a bit of information. It will bring the information about my functions and forma and also if I assigned it to uh, a structure and this has a default of living unit. This is a schedule where I sort of organized my room objects. So I'm able to keep track of the sort of levels, how much area and the sort of different functions that we're bringing over from format. 